Hello everyone, welcome to Cinema Academy YouTube channel where we bring for you every day a new question in art of problem solving, especially for the J main and advanced aspirants. So guys and girls, today we have a question which asks you to find the area enclosed in this curve. And you can see there's a curve which is given to you which is not that familiar one, right? It is not something that we can easily relate to, right? So sketching this curve is going to be a tough ask. So how do we solve these kind of questions? Let's try to understand. So first of all, a very careful observation here would show you that the terms that you have on the left side are homogeneous in nature. That means each of these terms are of degree four. And the terms on the right side also are homogeneous. That means they are of the same degree and that degree is two. Okay. Now for such kind of questions, we prefer using polar coordinates. Yes, polar coordinates could be a good help for us in such kind of questions. So let's substitute x as r cos theta and let's substitute y as r sin theta. Okay, so when you substitute this in this given Cartesian form, let's see what happens to the entire expression. So x to the power 4 will be r to the power 4. So we can safely pull out r to the power 4 from each of these terms. So you'll end up getting cos to the power 4 theta minus cos square theta sine square theta plus sine to the power 4 theta. Okay. And on the right hand side, you will have r square times cos square plus sine square, which is going to be a 1. So that leaves you with just an r square. Right. So far, so good. No issues. Okay. So we can drop off one of the r squares from both the sides. Okay. So we can cancel off r squares from both the sides. And not only that, we can club these two terms. We can club these two terms as cos square plus sine square, the whole square minus two cos square sine square theta, right? And of course we have an additional term of minus cos square sine square theta. So in light of that, this given expression boils down to r squared pi times one minus three sine square cos square theta equal to one. Okay. In short, you have r square as one by pi times one minus three sine square theta cos square theta. Okay. So multiply the numerator and denominator with a four so that we can convert, we can convert 4 sine square cos square theta as sine of 2 theta square. Yes. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm now going to convert the denominator as 4 minus 3 sine square 2 theta. Okay. So now how do we plot this polar curve? So now that we need to plot it, dear students, we need to keep certain things in our mind. R represents the distance of a point from the origin, right? R represents the distance of a point on the curve from the origin or the pole, right? And theta basically, here is the angle made by the line joining the point, joining the point with the x-axis, correct? Okay, with the x-axis, okay. So first of all, we need to see when theta is zero, okay, what is the value that R takes here? So when theta is zero, R square value is going to be one upon pi, okay? That means R is one upon root pi. This value is very close to 0.56, okay? All right, now this is the value that is going to repeat again when theta becomes a pi by two. Correct. So this value, this value is repeated for theta equal to zero, theta equal to pi by two, theta is equal to pi, theta equal to three pi by two, and theta equal to two pi finally. So can I say the graph is going to cut the x-axis, the positive x-axis, the negative x-axis, the positive y-axis, and, and the negative y-axis at the very same distance from the origin. Okay. Now, 
At the same time, we also need to figure out what is the maximum value that R can take. Okay, now all of you please understand the maximum value that R can take is when this value becomes a one because then the difference of four minus three sine square two theta would be the least. Correct. So, so R becomes maximum when sine of two theta square becomes a one. And that will happen when two theta takes values like pi by two. That means theta could be pi by four. It will also be maximum when two theta is three pi by two, correct? So when two theta is three pi by two, my theta value will be three pi by four, correct? And theta is equal to five pi by two, which means theta can be five pi by four. And not only that, two theta could be nine pi by two, which means theta is equal to nine pi by four, right? All right, so having figured this out, let's also figure out what could be this maximum value of R. What could be this maximum value of R? So as I already said, for you to have a maximum value of R, sine square two theta should be a one, right? So if that is a one, you'll end up getting four divided by pi as your R square. So R max square is four by pi. That means R max is going to be two by under root pi. So ladies and gentlemen, let's see how much does two by root pi come out to be. That comes out roughly to be 1.13-ish. Okay, so let's look into the graph of this function. All right, so when you're drawing the graph of this function, we need to be very careful that this graph is going to basically show the same values of R for a change in the value of theta by by pi by two. So let's say we are at this point when theta is zero and our value is roughly 0.56. Okay, now this value grows and becomes maximum of around, so our value here becomes a maximum of around 1.13-ish at an angle of pi by four. Okay. And slowly the value dies down and comes to the same value of 0 0.56 as it was when it started. Okay, and now again it regains the value and goes to a maximum value of 1.13 at 3 pi by 4. Comes down back again to the same value, 0.56 when theta is equal to pi. Then goes again and takes the value of 1.13 at theta equal to 5 pi by 4. Again returns back to 0.56 when theta value is 3 pi by 2. Again goes and becomes max at 1.13 when theta is 9 pi by 4 and finally returns to the same value when theta is equal to 2 pi. Okay, so dear all, what we see is this part of the curve this part of the curve, if you see this, the one which I'm shading with a uh, yellow color, this part of the curve is going to be repeated eight times. This is going to be repeated eight times in this entire graph, right? So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to use my formula for area of the curve in polar coordinate system, which is half r square d theta okay so let's use this fact half r square d theta okay so in our case my area will be obtained to be eight times half r square now what's my r square let's go back to this figure this is my r square my dear friends this is my r square okay so let me put this expression in place of r square so that comes out to be four by four minus three sine square two theta, okay, into d theta, into d theta, okay. So I'm going to integrate only from zero to pi by four because I'm decided to take eight times this area. So you have to start from theta equal to zero and go all the way, go all the way till theta equal to pi by four, right? So let's try to put that. And now let's try to simplify this. So this is going to be, this is going to be, 
So, uh, sorry, I forgot that pi there. Yes, so it's going to be 16 upon pi, 0 to pi by 4, d theta by 4 minus 3 sine square 2 theta. Yes. Now, this is one of the integrals that we have already learned how to do it. So let's divide the numerator and denominator by cos square 2 theta. So when you divide your numerator and denominator by cos square 2 theta, you end up getting secant square 2 theta on the top. You end up getting 4 secant square theta in the denominator, which you can also write as 1 plus tan square 2 theta and minus 3 tan square 2 theta, right? So this becomes 16 by pi, 0 to pi by 4, secant square 2 theta upon 4 plus tan square 2 theta, right? So what kind of a substitution should I go for? I should substitute tan of 2 theta as u, yes. So secant square 2 theta into 2 d theta becomes your du, right? In other words, your numerator, which is secant square 2 theta d theta becomes half of du, yes, half of du. So let's put in the values over here. So half of du, so that will become half outside, du on the top, and we have 4 plus u square. And what happens to the limits of integration? See, when theta is 0, u is going to be a 0. But when theta is going to be a pi by 4, u is going to go all the way till infinity. Correct? So you end up integrating 8 by pi from 0 to infinity, du upon 4 plus u square. Now, this is a standard integral, right? So this integral is inspired by a standard integral, which is integral of 1 by a square plus x square, which is 1 by a tan inverse x by a, all right? So we'll use this expression. So let's use this in our given integral. So my role of a is being played by 2. So here my a is 2. And of course, your x is u, right? So if I use this formula, I'm going to get 1 by 2 tan inverse of u by 2, right? And you have to put the limits of integration. So when you put an infinity, this is clearly going to be tan inverse of a very large number, which is going to be pi by 2, okay? And when you put a 0, you end up getting a 0, right? So basically, it simplifies to 8 by pi times pi by 4, which is clearly 2. So the answer to this question, the area under this curve, is actually two square units. Okay, so this answer, this answer becomes two square units. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye, stay safe, and stay healthy.